Well, welcome everybody again. This is now our eighth virtual church service. How did that happen? Eight services. Goodness me, that's two months. Uh, but it's been really great um, experimenting. It's been really great ga- being able to gather like this to, to worship as God's church. And yes, I am convinced that although we aren't in the same place, our worship is valid because as the scriptures say time and time again, we are united by the spirit and this morning we, we're joined by by tim in his office uh, keith at home later on we'll be joined by david i've no idea where david is going to be we'll find that later and then there may be some other surprises as we go uh, but this morning as always we're going to begin our worship by handing over to david who's going to lead us now in the song thank you very much david Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death Your perfect love is casting out fear And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storm of this life I won't turn back, I know you are near great being able to to gather and to share our news and hear from people 
all over the place. And uh, Tim is now going to bring us as has become our practice at our family news this morning. Tim, what news have you got for us today? Well, good morning, everybody. And isn't it good that God makes us a family? And that's why we call this family news. Um, we've got family in every part of the world, every part of the country. And it's been really nice over the last few weeks to have joined with some of that wider family um, and, and share together in our services. We're so pleased to have people from far away joining us on a Sunday morning. Uh, we've had people join us for the quiz, quiz night, for um, Bible study. We're having great times in Revelation. If you haven't made it on a Wednesday night yet, do uh, come along. It's just, it works so well on Zoom. It saves all the traveling. And we've really uh, got into Revelation with all its wonderful pictures and um, symbolism. We've had great comments from those who say, oh, I haven't got a clue what's going on. But through the evening, God has taught us stuff and just, I think, shown us little bits and pieces that we've maybe not seen before. Most of all, of course, we've seen the one who makes us family have this great vision of Jesus and, and we've been drawn out to worship him because he makes us brothers and sisters. Mm. He's uh, brought us from every nation, uh, every people, every kindred and loads of other things, all to become part of one family. And that is a wonderful thing. This week, we're uh, hoping to have on Monday night a quiz night again. Dust up those brains, see what lockdown has done. Don't think it's too serious a quiz. Uh, it's a bit of fun um, and hopefully is great fun. So don't get too competitive over it. This is from the team who came last last <laughs> time. It really doesn't matter. It's taking part that is the fun. Um, no, it was really good. It was really good. It's a nice, it's, it's so important to build one another up as family, isn't it? And those things do help quite a lot. Mm. Um, great to have recently visitors from the connection, uh, from other churches within the connection. I think sometimes we forget that we're part of a bigger family of churches and uh, the connectional churches, uh, it's great to share together and it might be worth, um, speaking personally, I need this encouragement, to go on the Connectional website, which has been revamped over the past year or two, and uh, have a look at that website. The address will be on our front page somewhere. Have a look at it um, and see what opportunities there are for, for fellowship with others uh, from the connection. Mm. Um, talking of our family, of course, we, we want to remember our family in Sierra Leone, our brothers and sisters there who are praying for us through this uh, virus and, and through all that we're facing. Um, they are praying for us. We need to pray for them. They're, they've got a few more cases. I think last week it was something like only 136. This week it's gone up to 225. So they are getting more people with this virus and they are very frightened by that mm. and need the reassurance of God's people. So do pray for them. Pray that their hearts will be kept secure in the love of God and that they won't get into too much of a panic about it. Because of their experience, they are very worried about uh, anything with the name virus and um, so let's hold them up before the Lord and, and remember them. This week uh, Kevin, Kevin Warren's mother died a couple of weeks ago and her funeral is on Monday afternoon. I'm not sure if it will be streamed for those who knew her uh, but we'll uh, yeah, remember Kevin and Dawn and, and, and their family. 
through this time. Um, opportunities for mission, we mentioned briefly uh, an online alpha, and that is uh, sort of in the pipeline. What we're hoping, the, the alpha is really for people who are coming new to the faith, to, who don't really know too much about God and what it's all about, but have that searching for him. Um, and that's going to happen possibly on a Tuesday evening at around five o'clock. Um, if you feel that you know someone who, who wants to come on that and join us, uh, do get in touch with either Ben or me and we'll arrange it. Timing is actually flexible. It doesn't have to be uh, uh, a Tuesday night or anything like that, but we can, we can fit in with whoever wants to come. So I think that's, that's it from me. Thanks very much and God bless you. Thank you, Tim. I must say, I, I do echo the encouragement about the Bible study group. Um, Revelation is one of those books that can be a little bit scary. It's a little bit weird and wacky and way out there. Uh, but I, I certainly found, uh, we're recording this on Thursday, and, and we met last night, and we had a, a fantastic time. Revelation is all about yeah. pulling back the veil and seeing what's really going on behind the scenes. Uh, and for the church at that time, they were in persecution. John was in exile. They were facing all sorts of troubles. And in many ways, that's so similar to where we're at today, isn't it? As we, we face this suffering, we, we, we face our own exile in our own houses and all of that kind of stuff. And we had the unveiling of God still being in power, that, that God in his throne when he was looking down the earth, he was still there. He was still with authority and might and power and majesty and salvation. And we saw that he had a plan for the world. He saw he had a vision, a hope, and was about to do something. And if you want to find out what that is, and what God's hope and plan and vision, and what he's doing in the world right now is, join us on Wednesday, because that's what we're going to begin to, to look at and answer some of those big why questions. Why, God, are you allowing suffering? Why, God, do you like, allow illness? Why? I'm sure we've all got why questions. So do, do come and join us, even if you've never been before, or may never come again. Just come and join us and give it a go. It's absolutely great fun. I'll mention more about Alpha in, in a moment. But before I get carried away and revert back to uh, our Wednesday night Bible saying Revelation, of course, that's not why we're here right now. And we're going to head into Acts again this week. And so I'm now going to hand over to Keith, who's going to bring us our reading. Uh, Keith, with his eagle eyes spotted, I've given him the wrong reading. So I'm now hoping and praying that we've got the right one now. Keith, over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much indeed. Right, we're going to go and start with Acts 8, verses 1 to 8. And it starts with, And Saul was there giving approval to Stephen's death. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem. And... Um, all except the apostles, were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house. He dragged off men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered uh, preached the word. Wherever they went, Philip went down to a city uh, in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. When the crowd heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said. With shrieks, evil spirits came out of many, and many para um, paralytics and cripples were healed. So there was great joy. In that city. May the Lord bless his word. Back to you, Ben. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Keith. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have this, your word, your written word. And we pray now that as we, we look into it, as we reflect on its meaning for us today and what it tells us about ourselves, our world, and about. 
we pray that you would open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds, so that this written word may become a living word, that it might speak to us, it might inspire us, it might minister to us. Come Holy Spirit, come, we pray. Move amongst your people this morning. Amen. Amen. must have been soul destroying for the early church they were just getting going when persecution broke out spurred on by Saul as we just heard in Keith's reading Stephen one of their key leaders was killed many fled for their lives this was the end of the church as they knew it would it survive how could they meet to worship what would be left when trouble passed where was God in all of this? Was it over before it all really began? I wonder if those questions sound familiar to you all. It may not be persecution that we're facing. Our trouble is lockdown and the virus. But the fears and the questions are the same. Where is God? What's going to be left of the church? In fact, I, I remember worrying in the early weeks when this first hit, I remember worrying, will we have a church left by the time we came out of lockdown? Will we get out of the habit of meeting? Would there be anybody there when I opened the community centre that first Sunday? Or would I be left there preaching to myself in, a, in an empty hall? Well, I wonder if I needn't have worried. We seem to be closer and coming together more often than we've ever done before, which is absolutely wonderful. I wonder if you can see the picture on, on the wall behind me over there. It's one I made with our children when they were little, uh, uh, copying the, the picture from the cover of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. The Phoenix, of course, is a, a mythical creature that, that dies in the flames, but then rises from the ashes in, in new life. As Christians, of course, we, we celebrate not a, a mythical story, that's told, but the wonderful news, the wonderful truth of, of Jesus and his resurrection, not a reincarnation, but Jesus himself, the same person, being raised from the grave to new life. For the early church, this experience rescued them from the despair of loss of Stephen, because they'd been there before. They'd been there when their leader had died, when trouble came, when it seemed as if everything was lost. And so when Jesus died, they learned. And when Stephen died now, they obviously were thinking, we've been here before. We know that persecution, we know that trouble, we know that death is not the end. And therefore we can keep on going in faith. God is still with us. And as we heard in Keith's reading, God wasn't stopped by persecution. He continued to be at work in them and through them and around them. And as they scattered, they took their faith with them, not hiding it, but sharing it. And so the church grew. I wonder if you can see the other objects on my shelf over there. I had to move the camera before we started, so I don't know which ones are in vision still. But the items on my shelf below the picture all came from visits to Sierra Leone. There's a, a, a drum and a couple of placards which the, the ministers gave to me. Sierra Leone, the connection there, has an amazing story of how the connection grew into being. It began when Selina, the Countess of Huntingdon, whose name our movement holds, 
sent missionaries to America to speak to the landed gentry there. But they weren't the only ones that heard the message. Their slaves also heard. They weren't the intended audience, but they heard. And they too were converted, maybe even in greater numbers than the landed gentry themselves. And when they were given their freedom, unbeknownst to us, they took the, the, the gospel, but also the, the, this denomination of the Countess of Huntington's connection with them. I'll cut a long story short. Eventually, they ended up in Sierra Leone, which is why if you go there today, the capital city is called Freetown, because Freetown, that's where the freed slaves went. We had no idea of this until some time later. I've got a book. Where's my book? Here it is. I have a little book and it's the Huntingdon's Connection Hymn Book. And I can't read the writing. It's so, so small. But two, two Africans were spotted in a, a service in London clutching. Now, I've heard different stories. One story says it was their hymn book. Another story says it was their membership book. But the minister there met them after the service and he didn't believe them that they were members of the connection until they showed him their book. And this book and their faith and the name of the denomination had made its way all the way from, from America up into Nova Scotia, then across to Sierra Leone and Freetown and had spread and grown. And isn't that an amazing story that the, the gospel message was heard and then through persecution, <laughs> times of trouble as, as slaves taken all around the world to Sierra Leone and there it, it took root and grew. And uh, the connection there here, no one knows of the connection. We're uh, a relatively speaking small movement. But in Sierra Leone, it's one of the three founding uh, denominations or movements that took the gospel to the country. So it's held in, in strong regard. They're, they're, they're known and uh, uh, one of those at the forefront of, of the early days of mission in that country. So an amazing story. And I encourage you to find out more about the work there and the work not just in the past, but also the work that continues in that country today. But the fascinating thing is, who is it that took the gospel story to Sierra Leone? These weren't great evangelists. These weren't paid ministers. These weren't celebrities. These were converted slaves, ordinary people, uneducated people. They didn't know much. They had no special skills. They hadn't been taught particularly. And yet they took with them a love and passion for Jesus that led to, to that country growing in faith and finding Jesus. And isn't that the same story as we read earlier on in, in the book of Acts? Michael Green wrote about this, uh, an English theologian, in one of his books and saying, sorry, I must look down to read this. This must often have been not formal preaching, but informal chattering to friends and chance acquaintances in homes and wine shops, on walks and around market stalls. They went everywhere, and I love this phrase, they went everywhere gossiping the gospel. They did it naturally, enthusiastically, and with the conviction of those who are not paid to say that sort of thing. Consequently, they were taken seriously, and the movement spread notably around the lower classes. Now, we are not living in first century Palestine. We're not living in Sierra Leone in the past. We are in the UK today. But I think our situation now gives us an opportunity for something similar to happen. In a time of suffering, how we respond can have a significant impact on those around us. I read an interesting article during the week on the Guardian website. I heard it also on the, on the BBC radio, which to me, those two things together give it some, some weight. And it said this, 
A quarter of adults in the UK, did you hear that? A quarter of adults in the UK have watched or listened to a religious service since the coronavirus lockdown began. And one in 20 have started praying during the crisis, according to a new survey. The survey of more than 2,000 people commissioned by the Christian aid agency Tear Fund and carried out last weekend found that a third of young adults, a third of young adults aged between 18 and 34, had watched or listened to an online or broadcast religious service compared with one in five adults over the age of 55. And this is the figure that really intrigues me. One in five of those who have tuned into services in the past few weeks say they have never gone to church. If you want to read more about that, I'll put the link to the, the Guardian website where you can read the, their detail or, or, or below this post. But isn't that fantastic? It's astonishing figures. Mm. I think so long in this country, the church has thought, what impact can we make? You know, we are nobody. No one listens to us. People don't care. The church has been forgotten. We're seen as irrelevant and boring. But all of a sudden, it seems that people are, are sitting up and paying note, maybe not to us, but to the message that we bring. And of course, an element of this is just because it's something to do when you're sitting at home, bored, locked down. Some of it might be exaggeration. We all know statistics can be made to say whatever you want. But there must be something in this. People are paying attention and giving interest where there wasn't before. And so doesn't this seem like the perfect time for, for us ordinary people to be gossiping the gospel? We don't need to be experts to do this. We just need to be willing and to give it a go. And right now, there seems to be a willingness to hear. So let's let's make the most of this opportunity. It might not come around again. So where you might be thinking, where do I start? What can I do to share the gospel? Well, the first thing I'd say is don't try and contrive situations. I've certainly been in conversations before when someone has said, I must take every conversation and somehow twist it round to talking about Jesus. And so you could be I don't know, in a garage forecourt, leaning over a car bonnet, trying to fix something. And somehow the conversation is turned around. Oh, you know who can fix everything? It's Jesus. And, and we all know that, that, that that's obvious. It's blatant and it's just awkward. It doesn't, doesn't work. Instead, let, let's pray for a chance to, to speak. And when it comes, let's look out for it and, and, and respond when it comes naturally in conversation. And, and I reckon... That's the kind of prayer God likes. Surely God wants us to be sharing the gospel. So God, give us opportunities to do this naturally and effectively. But here's four things you might want to think about trying this week. If someone asks you, how are you coping? And I expect you're getting asked that at the moment. Maybe you could talk about how your, your faith has helped you to cope. Or, or just maybe simply it's been been... I found it really has made a difference for me meeting up with folks from church online. There's something about being with God's family that makes a difference. Or, or maybe we've got this quiz night tomorrow night, Monday night. Is there somebody you could invite to come along and join us? Yes, the quiz isn't all about the Bible, but it's bringing people to spend time with others of Christian faith. And that might gradually lead the conversation onto things of faith. Maybe you could share our online services with someone, somebody who's searching for something to do or, or someone you might think wants cheering up or someone who wants hope in their lives. You, someone might say, what have you been doing this week? Well, on, on Sunday, I, I watched our service. I found that really helpful. Would you like to see it? If you do social media, you can share this post. And I suspect somewhere on this page down there, there's all sorts of share buttons. You could click and see what happens. Who knows? Or maybe, you know, someone who's asking those questions, those why questions. And you could say to them, well, look, I think faith gives an answer. Are you interested in exploring that? Maybe you might like to come to our, our Alpha course where in a no strings attached way, we, 
we ask and explore those questions and don't worry it won't be us church folk it will be others like you searching that and watching a video and, and so on exploring what the bible has to say about that so that, that there's four easy things you can do you don't need to be an expert to do any of that you don't need to have all the answers to do any of that you just need to speak naturally and just share something of your experiences and point towards these resources that we can have online at this time that are so easy to share so how about it how about this this week why don't we all pray that god give, will give us the chance to share in a natural genuine way with someone that we know so shall we give it a go and let's see what happens so i don't know about you but maybe the best place to start as i said is is in prayer so shall we shall we do that shall we pray together right now heavenly father we don't want to deny the tragedy of our current situation the suffering the struggles the, the bereavement the strain that exists lord we would pray of course for all caught up in it pray for for comfort for those who are bereaved we pray for strength for those who are facing the illness for your healing we pray for wisdom and discernment for those responding on a national level pray particularly for our government as they look to the the what next questions and we expect we'll be hearing fairly soon news about what we're going to do as a nation next give them your wisdom we pray that they may get that right but lord as well as this being a time of suffering we recognize that it's a time of opportunity as well we've seen how in the past you have taken negative things times of struggle times of persecution times of turmoil and you've used them not to say that they're good but you've used them for good and so we pray that right here right now you would help us to take this opportunity to share the good news that you are god that you come with with salvation with healing with hope with a message of reconciliation a message of restoration a message of healing lord we we're maybe a bit nervous about sharing that maybe feeling a bit clumsy what will people do what will they say how will they react and so we pray simply that you'll help us to do this we pray that you give us opportunities this week to share in easy ways and we pray that not only you give us opportunities you help us to recognize those opportunities when they come and that you give us the words to speak and lord i pray for each and every one of us that we will be bold and courageous and that when we come back together again next week together that you fill us with stories of how people have responded to what we've said and what we've shown them and that all we may see you at work in our land because that is our desire that others would find the hope and the good news and the joy and the love that we have discovered in you our wonderful wonderful god amen amen this morning our prayers are going to be for our brothers and sisters in sierra leone father it is a fantastic thing to be part of a family that stretches around the globe to know we have brothers and sisters in every nation today we lift up to you our connection in sierra leone we thank you for the amazing story of how the gospel reached to them in such a, a route despite persecution we give thanks this morning that as far as we know none of our members there have either been infected or have died from coronavirus from covid 19. we lord we pray that you'll protect them from that we pray for the leaders of the church that they would have wisdom in their response to it but also have insight as to how best to protect the churches and to share the gospel to the wider land lord we pray for the country for its leaders for too long corruption has been an issue we pray that you'll protect their leaders from corruption you'll give them wisdom so that the country may be restored to the vitality and strength it should have 
nor rescue them from their poverty, and fill them with the glorious knowledge of you. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to David, who's going to lead us in another song. Thank you, David. Over to you.
Well, once again, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're coming now towards the close of our service, but just a reminder, you are welcome to join us for our, our virtual coffee and chat after the service. Uh, again, as usual, there, there should be a link down below for that. Do come along and, and join us. It, it's good to, to worship like this, but our, our, our talking and speaking and seeing each other is just as important part of, of our worship. But we're going to close now by saying the grace and I'm going to welcome back Keith and Tim. Come back in, guys, and welcome everybody else who's taken part this morning. Let's share together in saying the words of the grace. May the grace, May the grace of, of our the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ the and the love of God and the, and the fellowship of, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. 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 Look forward to seeing you all in the moment. Take care. God bless. God bless. There may be something else inserted here. I've no idea. We'll find out by the weekend. Thank you.